a tectonic time bomb. Staggering new numbers show just how disastrous a major quake on the Hayward Fault could be. Good evening, I'm Ken Bastida. And I'm Elizabeth Cook. A new report from the USGS is a wake-up call. The 52-mile-long Hayward Fault runs to the heart of the East Bay. Two million people at risk in neighborhoods, businesses, and the Cal campus. That's where KPIX 5's Len Ramirez is live with the dire new predictions. Len? That's right, business is going on as normal here at UC Berkeley, but it's what's happening beneath the surface of the earth that has officials worried. And they put out this report today about the Hayward Fault, which runs right underneath Memorial Stadium. And what could happen if that fault decides to go in a major quake? The, the fault rupture zone passes right down here. And Memorial Stadium at Berkeley is a house divided, with the Hayward Fault cutting right through the football field. But it's up in the stands where you see how the stadium's 2010 retrofit built gaps into the north end zone bleachers where the fault runs. And expansion joints now bridge the two sides of the stadium through Section X. On this side is one independent structure, and there's a joint here, and then on this side is a totally separate independent structure. In a big quake, the two sides should move into Independently to minimize damage. The whole Berkeley campus is one of the, you know, the only campus in the country and I'm sure one of the only campuses in the world that is located essentially right on a fault. The tour was part of a day long earthquake awareness event put on by the U.S. Geological Survey called Haywired. It's to call attention to the high likelihood and deadly consequences of a major earthquake on the 52 mile long Hayward Fault. This scenario is at least 10 times worse than Loma Prieta in 1989. Because the Hayward Fault runs through the East Bay's urban core, the scenario predicts 800 fatalities, 1,800 injuries, 400 fires, up to 50,000 homes destroyed, and half a million people displaced, not to mention days of disruption to water and power. It's coming. It's not if, it's when. Two events were held, one at UC Berkeley, the other at Central Park in Fremont. That's where an old community center has morphed into a sort of ongoing earthquake lab. The slipping of the Hayward Fault broke the concrete floor years ago. It's now part of an exhibit on earthquake awareness and readiness. We were all panicking. We weren't sure what to do because we've never experienced that big of an earthquake before. Nana Yoshimura survived the magnitude 9 earthquake in Japan in 2011. She's now a freshman at UC Berkeley and says what can be harder for most people is what happened after the shaking stops. When we had the earthquake in Japan, all the supermarkets run out of stuff and stocks because people ran to get stuff. And I think it's definitely like nice to be prepared to uh, have food and waters and basic supplies. Now something else now, something else that a lot of people don't realize is what could happen after the main jolt. In fact, the USGS wants to send out the reminder to people that the aftershocks can be just as deadly, if not more so, than the original quake. They've seen that happen, Liz, around the world. Yeah, and Len, you covered the aftermath of Loma Prieta. As you know, it took years to rebuild. Did doing this story bring back memories of what happened after that huge quake? Yeah, and that's one of the other big takeaways from this study from the USGS today is that what happens after the quake? Uh, the USGS said that most of us are going to survive that quake. Uh, it's the aftermath. It's the water, the power, the getting around, the infrastructure loss that is going to cause a lot of uh, difficulty for people in the Bay Area. There's been a lot of uh, money spent in the last uh, 20 years or so since Loma Prieta to upgrade. In fact, uh, the stadium was upgraded here. A lot of the infrastructure water pipes have been upgraded, but it's going to take a little while. You have to be able to survive those first uh, three or four days after the quake. That's a good reminder to be prepared.